here an example application with a couple of projects and tasks that need to be done for those projects. Now let's say I run into some performance issues on this page and I would like to add some fragment caching to it. So here's the index template for the page we were looking at. Uh, it's quite simple, it just calls render for the projects. So for each one it's going to render out the project partial, which can be seen here. And this is also quite simple. This renders out the various tasks. So this will render the task partial for each one of those. And that's what makes up that page we were looking at. Now I want to add some fragment caching here. So going to the project partial, I'm going to add a quick call to cache and then passing in the project uh, model. And so if you aren't familiar with fragment caching, check out episode 90 where I go into further detail. Now since I'm rendering out the tasks inside of here, it'd be nice if the cache expires when a task changes. And I can do so by going into my task model, and this belongs to project association. I'll set touch as true, so that way it will uh, update the project that it belongs to when a task updates. And then finally, to see the effects of this, I'm going to go into my development config file and set perform caching to true, just temporarily so that we can try this out. All right, so now when I restart my Rails app and reload this page, it's going to storage of these projects into a fragment cache. And if I reload it again, it's going to read from that fragment cache each time. However, if I edit a task, then it's going to uh, automatically expire the cache and use a new one because it updated the project as well. All right, so this is working great, but what if I decide to make a change to the view template? For example, what if I want to use an order list here instead? Let's try this out, reloading the page, and we don't see that change because that is already in the cache and that cache hasn't expired, so it's going to read from it and not uh, use our new template changes. A common workaround to this problem is to keep a version number in this cache key. So along with the project, I'll also store a version number, let's say version one. And because I changed the cache key, it's going to pick up the new template and is now using an ordered list. However, this means every time I update the template, I'll need to remember to change this version number so that it uses a new cache key. This way, it will pick up those changes with the fragment cache. So this is a little bit of a hassle, but not too bad. But things quickly get out of hand if we have nested fragment caches. For example, remember the task partial here. What if I want to fragment cache this as well, just for a little bit of extra performance if maybe the project changes without the tasks changing quite frequently? So in this case, I could just cache for uh, the version one of the task. And let's try this out. I'll also need to uh, update this version so that it uses up the new cache so that we're having a fresh cache on each of these. And reloading this page, now each project is stored in a fragment cache and each of the tasks are stored in their own fragment cache. Now let's say in the task partial, I want to change this edit link to rename. And because I changed this template, I want to change a version number to two. And when I reload this page, we don't see that change. Even though it's going to write a new uh, fragment cache for each of the tasks, it's not going to uh, make a new cache for the project. So that's going to still serve the old cache, which doesn't include that change. This means whenever we change our task partial, we need to remember to change the version number for the project partial as well so that it picks up the change. And now reloading the page, and there's that change. So even though that worked, it's still difficult to remember to do that every time we change the template. Now this is where the cache digest gem comes in handy. Uh, this functionality will be included in Rails 4, but it's extracted out as a gem for now, so you can use it in your Rails 3 projects. Now the way this works is that it's going to include a digest in the fragment cache keys that is based on the template. So if your template ever changes, it's going to use a new cache key, so it will pick up that change. Let's try this out. In the gem file for this project, I'll add the cache digest gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. So with this gem, it's no longer necessary to keep track of a version number for your fragment caches. So I'll remove that both in the uh, project cache and the task one. So now after I restart my Rails app and reload this page, it's going to include a digest in the cache key representing the template. Now let's try this out by making a change to the template without changing any kind of version number in the cache key. And then reload the page. 
and unfortunately that doesn't seem to work. It doesn't pick up our change. And the reason being is that the cache digest uh, gem does not read the template file every single time on each request. That would be terribly inefficient. So it keeps its own local memory cache of the digest for each of the template paths. So that's why it didn't pick up this change. So to get this working in development, we'll need to restart our Rails app, but normally this isn't an issue in production because when you redeploy with your changed templates, it's going to restart your Rails app anyway. And this time when I reload the page, it's going to pick up that changed template because the uh, cache digest is now different when it read the content of the template and based off of that. Now what's cool about this feature is that it's smart enough to detect dependencies. It sees that I have a render call here for the project tasks, which will render the task partial, so it knows that if I change this template, it's going to need to change that cache. So after restarting the Rails app, it picks up that change. Now what you have to watch out for is cases where it won't properly detect the dependency. For example, I have a method on this project model called incomplete tasks. So let's say I'm using that and rendering just the incomplete tasks here. I'm going to restart and reload for it to pick up that new change. And this time, if I go back to the task partial and uh, change this back, and then restart and reload again, and that change wasn't picked up because it didn't properly detect that task dependency. For this reason, it's a good idea to run this rake tasks that the gem includes called cache digest nested dependencies and then pass in a template path. So I'll say project slash index. So this tells me it detected the project partial dependency, which is correct, but it also has this incomplete task dependency, which is not correct, it's just called task. So this is something I need to correct in order for it to pick up that change. In these cases, it's recommended to explicitly pass the partial option. So we say task slash task, and then pass in collection as the task records. And this time when I run that same rake task, it's going to properly detect the task dependency so it will update the uh, cache digest appropriately. Now there are further details about this in the readme, which I recommend you check out. This will tell you what different render calls that I can parse correctly and which ones it can't. And also there's another way to specify a template dependency if you're rendering a partial in a helper method or something. Well, that's it for this episode on the Cache Digest gem, a feature that will be included in Rails 4. It's a handy way to update the cache when the template changes. Just watch out for the gotchas. Well, I hope you found this useful.